can say that again now. Guys, ask me some <laughs> tough questions. Tough Let questions. Me okay. spot. And if we don't do it this time, Absolutely. do it next time. Right. Well, I just, you know, I live in the city limits, and I hate to see you go as a, as a city councilman, but but I think you're going to you're gonna better serve Western North Carolina as a congressman, and, uh, and I appreciate the fact that you're running. I'm really excited about that. Uh, but one of my things is, is I want to know how you're going to play into the fact of of uh, some of the stuff that we've got going on around here, such as the uh, bridge between 26 and and I don't know if the road to nowhere is settled. How can you how can you work on stuff like that? Well, you know, the road to nowhere is a congressional issue, and and I can tell you my position on that, and it's the same as it would be with any similar circumstance. You just keep you keep your word. You honor your word. Your word doesn't have a statute of limitations on it. They gave our word. The, the government gave its word many years ago. We, we, we should honor that, and that's that's where I stand with that. Now, I twenty six quarter, uh, we we have uh, you know federal dollars involved in that, but that's largely an NCDOT issue, and that's that's not something that uh, uh, I think a, a federal elected official would be laying laying a terribly heavy hand on. Okay, fair enough. Well, uh, Dr. Mumpire, you, you mentioned earlier about taxation. You know, it's a big concern of everybody. You know, there's a working class out there, and the working class is just barely making it from paycheck to paycheck. We need to drop our tax rate on those individuals making less than, let's say, fifty or 60000 a year. Uh, what do you feel, and I think this has been a question that's been asked to you before about the flat tax and doing away with the internal revenue I, I as like, we know it. I, I, you know, that, that'll that never happen. They'll never do away with internal revenue as much as we all wish it. But but what we can do, uh, I like the idea of a flat tax. I like the simplicity of it. Uh, people, Some people claim it's not fair, harder on the poor. I disagree. I think any time you create a level playing field that people can understand, uh, that, that they can figure out, they're more likely to participate in it in a good way. What we have now is a system that nobody can figure out, and, and it's another rigged lottery. I can go hire an expensive CPA and have much better chance of coming out with a lower tax bill than the average person who's not able to do that. Uh, when I say I, I don't mean necessarily me, anybody, and I don't, that's not fair. So simple, simple is good. And then taking the, ta not rigging it, uh, that, that's what the federal government does that I find abhorrent is they, 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 switch the rules around, fool around with the rules, and, and create an unfair, unfair playing field. The, the rule of law is one of the fundamental tenets of any successful culture. And if you don't um, make laws that you intend to uphold fairly and equitably, you destroy people's faith in the system. And so people start bending the rules, mm -hmm. taking shortcuts, He's getting the break I'm not getting, so I might need to steal to, to compensate, or I might need to deal drugs. It's okay for me to deal drugs, because this isn't a fair deal. And that's not okay. You have to support the rule of law, and I think uh, our good folks in Washington do a, a, a terribly poor job of that. We should be ashamed for what we've allowed to happen on our borders. Okay. Well, you asked for a real hard question, so I'll just throw it out there, Dr. Yeah. Mumpower. Here we are in, in the war. Uh, where do we stand on that as far as if you got elected, how would you feel about the war? and How do you feel about it now, and what do you think our goal should be in the future? I, f I feel just like every, probably most other people do, I hate it. Um, and if you were to ask me, should we have gotten into it, um, I, I'd, put, um, I'd put some question marks around that. That could be debated. But we're there. Uh, and if you're there, you, you should see it through. You should not, I don't care what people... Don't like to say, hear this said, but it is cutting and running, no matter how you spin it. If you walk away, and you're walking away from the men and women who have served, suffered, been wounded, and died, and what they served, suffered, and were wounded and died for, if you don't do your best to pull that that chestnut out of the fire. I saw it in Vietnam, when when I first got in the country in '71, and I was no big deal in Vietnam. I was just a little noodlehead, 18 year old, but. First got there, I think there was something like 200,000 troops left, and when I, I left, there were like 40,000. And it wasn't long, too, too many uh, months after that, to we, uh, we basically capitulated, America did, and walked away from Vietnam. We had promised them air, air support and resources to fight if they were invaded. And when it came to the final hour, we walked away. We behaved in a very cowardly fashion. 
Uh, should we have been in Vietnam? Well, that could be argued too, but we were there and a lot of men and women died and, and we dishonored them with the way we handled that. We should not do that with Iraq. So I, I, I know it's a very unpopular war and I know people have strong feelings about it. Uh, I don't like seeing men and women die. I'm not willing to betray the people who've served. And I'll say something else, it's not just about us. It's about the Iraqi people that I don't think we should walk away from them. I don't think we should take the convenient, what's in it for me path. Now that said, there is something I would like to see. I would like to see a referendum in Iraq. And unless there's a super majority vote to keep American troops in Iraq, then I do believe we should begin a phased drawdown. But if they say, you're here, we want you to be here, we need you to be here, and we're gonna work with you through a referendum, and we should stay there and fight the fight. Well, that's pretty good. I, I, I tend to agree with you 100% on that one. On a lighter note, can you guys pretend that you're liberal? <laughs> <laughs> well, well actually, actually, Randy here has not been... Uh, he, he just started from day one. We should never went into war. We should never Whereas win. I've been a pro supporter. Yeah. I thought we needed to be there under the right reasons. Uh, mm -hmm. and, 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 and real quick before Randy asks you another question, General Petraeus, uh, as you know, the report came down two weeks ago. We talked about this here on Sound Off Bunkum on a Thursday night. And I made a prediction two weeks ago, Dr. Munpower, that no matter what his report said, if it was a positive as far as the decrease of, of, of activity as far as bombings and killings, if it came in, that the other party would turn that. Uh, I just think that General Petraeus, is, his reputation was well liked on both parties, but now he's being attacked on, uh, on his report, and, and what do you feel about that? Well, first off, I, I, I really was uncomfortable with the way he was attacked. Um, I think as an elected official, you have a responsibility to call, I'm going to say it, to call BS if, you, if you're hearing BS. But what I saw was the same thing I think a lot of other people saw. People saw a knee-jerk reaction. What you're telling me doesn't fit my mindset, my paradigm, my beliefs. Therefore, you're a discreditable person. And, and, and as, uh, as uh, folks um, of, of, of certain extreme persuasions tend to do, if, if I don't agree with you, that makes you a bad person. And I, I find that uh, abhorrent, very, very disturbing that they have to attack the individual. Now, is he a perfect guy? No. Uh, he, he's a work in progress just like me and everybody else I know. And he said some things, conflicting things. I mean, he said, he said some things that haven't come true. Gosh, he's sure the first guy to ever do that, isn't he? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I defy anybody in public office, in public service, to get it perfectly, you, you, you can't do that. He's, he's fighting in a tough arena. I heard him say something that I was impressed with. Somebody asked him the question, how, uh, how, much, uh, uh, how much of this is military and how much of this is political and educational and economic? And he said, no more than 20% of it is military. That's a smart guy. Wow. He gets it. Fight the military, fight that 20% hard, but you've got to deal with the other 80%. Uh, he's a savvy guy, and, and, and I, I, find, I was uncomfortable with how he was treated, as I always am with patriots who are 